Hi everyone. Friday was basically a continuation of Thursday, but overall it wasn't that bad. I know you see a lot of red lines on this Russell 2000 chart, but just try to ignore them. All you need to really know is that after breaking down below this red line that you see right here, I just I know I just told you ignore them, but I'm an idiot, so my apologies. Uh, we broke down below the trend line here on heavy volume down 2.31%. And today we followed through down 0.47%. As you can see via the intraday tail, we had a nice rally off the lows. However, once again, we had a weak final two hours. And that's the fourth session in a row. I can't show you intraday charts here on Telechart. That, that, but that's the fourth session in a row where we have seen a weak final two hours. It's not like we're seeing a weak final hour. We're seeing two hours of basically churning and selling the past four sessions. So overall, the Russell 2000 looking still pretty weak, but nice intraday move. That will be a pivot point, will be these intraday lows. If we continue to hold those and start to rally, I can believe that, you know, we may have seen short-term lows maybe before we can possibly head a little higher, but it's going to be higher to break out. And the bottom line is with the NASDAQ, we had another technical pretty poor day. It wasn't a distribution day with volume lower than the day before, but it is well above average. Once again, that nice intraday tail, but you can now see we are below the 50-day moving average, so that is never good. But we have the 200-day moving average below. So right now, while it looks bad and we are under technical sell signal, remember, after a low-volume rally, tons of churning, then distribution. Now we have tons of churning. Recently got distribution. We'll see if we get another pullback like we just saw back to the 200-day moving average. If we ever, ever break down below the 200-day moving average on the uh, NASDAQ, watch out below. The NYSE was also down 0.32%. Volume was well above average, so that wasn't a really good session there either. Dow, our S&P 500 also um, gave a technical pretty poor session. Uh, and, and once again, despite not being a distribution day, it's still not a good day. Not being able to immediately reverse that selling, signaling that this is more than a one-day event. But we're still above the long-term trend lines on all the averages, so nothing's too bad now. I had some pretty good strong... Um, uh, buy signals, ACT, you remember this one. I know we just recently went long and got cut out before earnings, and now it's giving another signal before earnings. So if this thing can gap up post-earnings and the market can find a floor, this might be one that you want to keep your eye on. Uh, we also got a good little signal before earnings and FRP. FRP, um, very, very nice gap up a few sessions ago. Held that 50-day moving average and reverse on well above average volume pocket pivot point signal. Another well above average volume day supported 50-day moving average. And now a breakout above the open of that gap up day on strong volume. The problem is, though, is that FRP, despite this amazing pattern, it has earnings next week. I think that they have earnings on Monday or Tuesday. So it's a no-go, but still a very interesting one to watch. And some stocks to watch also that gave signals that I'm not going long. XRS, nice follow through post its big move. ATRO, I have on watch. Would like to see that continue to consolidate sideways. CMCM, nice move through the 50 day moving average. That's um, a really solid signal. WWD is um, coiling here. If it can continue to consolidate here at the 50 day moving average, a, br a bounce or breakout off the 50 day moving average above the recent highs would be a nice long signal. As you can see, earnings are already out. Nice strong reaction to earnings, consolidating the gains quite well. So this one is on watch for a breakout bounce over the 50 day moving average. You could go long here and you don't risk much. However, to me, this is not a very long consolidation pattern, so I would like to see the base be something long like this, for instance, even though that this move didn't work, it failed, maybe the next one will work, so it's one to keep an eye on. Uh, but before I go over my new long positions, I want to go over potential um, buy stops, so I'm going to start setting EW. Uh, hopefully the market can continue to pull back or something, or this stock can move sideways, but I needed to trade a few more days um, in this tight range. But I want to set a buy stop on that. LPSN also post earnings. I want to set a buy stop on this stock. Very, very nice. VDSI is now traded long enough. And um, today's uh, session is positive enough after yesterday's strong session, despite the market selling off 2%, that I want to go ahead and reestablish my buy stops this weekend. ICLR, I think I want to go ahead and establish buy stops on this one this weekend. ZLTQ, I'll be watching. It's still too early, but it is one that I'm watching. And then Tesla, I believe I want to do buy stops on that. 
and it's going to be basically right here. I want to get it the buy stop somewhere right around this level. It's going to be just a little bit lower. I'm just a little bit off on drawing this. So it'll be right there about where my buy stop is on Tesla. You could also use the high day of this day if you want. But right now my favorite ones I'm um, setting up are ICLR, LPSN, and VDSI. So keep an eye out on some of these stocks that are still consolidating. I know that we've taken a few off and I'm showing you those really quick. But they could still potentially set up and be put back on again if the market can find its footing. The cells that we have tonight, GWPH by proxy under sell signal. The stock is closing below its 50-day moving average for the first time since we went long. That is a 25% sell. XCC is a 50% sell, not a 100% or 75% sell because of the big intraday reversal. And plus, we still have strong gains in this stock since we went long. Full sells, IMO, confirmation sell below the 50-day moving average on another above average volume day. So this one appears to be completely rolling over. We're going to lock in the rest of our gains. And then PXD, um, if we had like big gains like we did in XEC with that big intraday reversal today, this would not be a 100% sell. But since our long signal, we only have a 3% gain, and I don't want to see this turn into a loss. So that is a full sell. As for new long signals, like I said, Tesla's got to break out first. VDSI's got to break out first. LPSN's got to break out first. But MCK is already breaking out. MCK, let's go to function one to show you this. Whoops. What am I want to do? Function one. Oh, there we go. Sorry. MACD, you can see that that's turned up higher. TSV, excuse me. TSV's turned up higher. Back to back pocket point um, three, excuse me. Back to back to back pocket pivot point buy signals. BOP has increased all three of those days. But down here, MACD has turned up higher, as you can see here in the blue line. Money stream surging higher, breaking out to a new high, well above new highs back here. Relative strength line breaking out to overall new highs, uh, confirming the price action. And heavy volume on this day. This is all post earnings. Earnings are out of the way. So it looks like that we have a good long signal MCK. Because earnings are out of the way and there's a lot of relative strength in the stock, it is a 5% position despite us being in a sell signal. That means if we are under a buy signal, yes, this is a 10% signal. And then ICAD, we're going to go ahead and go long 2.5%. The earnings were um, extremely strong. And if this was a higher price stock and a better market, it would be a bigger position. But I can't go 5% long. I would under a buy signal. But 2.5% in ICAD following their earnings release. Uh, the stock has showing strong earnings growth, strong revenue growth, strong profit margin growth. And they expect um, earnings, sale, revenue, and profit margins to continue to increase in the upcoming quarters. So despite the market looking like it is, this stock looks good. And we'll take a chance on it. If it doesn't work out, the cut loss levels are clearly stated on the new longs position page. All right, everyone. Have a great weekend. Thank you.